welcome back to the channel. Been a bit quiet recently, not had no time to do videos. Um, keep meaning to do one, wanted to do one, but it's just been not so much busy. I just, enough work to tide me over, not enough time to play with the camera and do some videos of what I've been doing. And some of the stuff's not been as exciting, but I'm doing a exhaust system on a customer's RS Turbo. I'll show you the car in a minute. Um, so I've done the system, I've done the down pipe, all pie cut sections, I've done a screen pipe that exits out the bumper of the car, how they wanted it, um, out of a carbon duct moulded into the bumper. Um, we've done a centre section, small silencer, road car, so they're not really fussed about noise, so a small silencer, nice centre section with more pie cuts, going to a slip joint at the back, and they want a side exit tailpipe as per the looks of the, even though the RS Turbo wasn't one, but the looks of the like Group B Rally Car era. So a small letterbox style with some upright supports in it. That's the look they wanted. I've done quite a few of them in the past. Um, so yeah, that's what this video is gonna be about, just to show you how I do them, how they're done, uh, the way I cut them, fold them, weld them up and stuff like that. Nothing super exciting, but shows a little bit of welding, a little bit of fabricating and then it will show the finished part on the car and you can see what you think. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. As always, I'll show you the car quickly. Here's the car. Covered under a sheet because it's absolutely minty mint and I don't want to scratch it, mark it or get dust on it. But the side exit tailpipe is gonna sit here. So we're gonna come out of this section probably about 160, 170 millimeters wide and go back a set distance. And if I just unclip the camera from the stand, I can show you underneath that. There's the section we've already done, which is a slip joint um, with tabs and springs welded onto it. And then we'll use this gap here for where the tailpipe will go from where the carbon arch spat is here and we'll connect it up onto that slip joint and weld that so that's what we've got to do i'll show you a quick look at the car i did ask the customer's permission before i start showing his car off to everyone but it really is a work of art it's a stunning car with tons and tons of trick bits on it it's got all the bells and whistles it's still a 1.6 cvh but that's probably about the only thing that's original on it. You can see here the pie cut down pipe that I've already done. And down there, coming through here is a screamer pipe, which goes in between um, the front section of the chassis leg. That's a cut hole in the single skin section there, not the actual chassis leg itself. And then it comes out and we've done a screamer pipe the external wastegate that exits through this carbon duct which is moulded into the bumper. And then if you look underneath, there's the section and it's on V-bands so it can be taken off or changed if needed without changing everything else. And if I just lay on the floor here and get a bit, a bit dusty, there's the rest of the downpipe. With all the pie cuts, we put a lambda sensor in there. There's an EGT boss further up, but the EGT probe's not installed yet. There's a name plaque for that section, just so everyone knows it's one of mine. And I'm gonna put a name plaque on the tower pipe as well. We've got a flexi in there, one hanger at the front, small silencer, and then you can just about make out the rest of the system going back there to where we've got the slip joint and the spring clamps. So yeah, that's the job. So I'm gonna show you making the side exit and uh, go from there. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so this is the plaque that we're gonna put on the side of the side exit. Now this is gonna be engraved onto a piece of 1.5 mil thick stainless steel, um, cut from a bit of sheet. You can see I've just put my name on there, Kinsey Fabrications. Now I've just done this with Create Sketch 
and then create text. I didn't need it to be anything fancy. This comes out really nice because I've done this previously. So that's all it is, drawn on a bit of 1.5 mil, which is extruded. And then we go into the design, uh, from the design, sorry, into the manufacturer. And by the way, this is Fusion 360 that I'm using. Uh, brilliant, affordable, uh, whether it keeps on being affordable in the future is another matter because same with everything, they get you hooked and prices go up. But we'll see. Currently, it was on a year deal for 200 and something pound, 220 pound maybe. So I bought the one year and this is what I've learned all my um, CNC CAD software through. I've never used anything else. So for me, it was a great learning tool and there's lots of tutorials online. So it's brilliant in that sense. Right, so we're into the manufacture. Now, of course, we haven't got to do any tool pass other than tracing out this engraving so I've copied this from what I've done on the last one and I'll open it up to show you so what we've done is in 2d we've gone for the trace tool path now my tool is a 90 degree it's on there it's 45 sorry it is 45 degree chamfering tool now it's not a brand new tool, it's nothing special and this is on stainless and it take me a bit of figuring out to get the feeds and speeds but we are running this at 2000 RPM on the spindle um, and our cutting feed rate is 200 millimetres a minute which is 0 0.05 millimetres per tooth lead in and lead out 500 millimetres a minute and plunge feed rate is also 500 millimetres a minute and the feed per revolution 0.25 now, if we go into our geometry selections, you can see, uh, see sorry, the whole of the text is selected on that one. I only had to click on one part and it knows to pick all of it. In our heights tab, it's just clearance heights. So we've got stock top. Uh, it's irrelevant really. And all I've got is the feed height at 0 0.5 millimeters. And then on our passes, Tolerance is 0 0.01, uh, not really fussed about anything else there. Now, because we're doing it as a trace, on stock to leave radially, I don't want to leave anything, but axially, I want to leave 0 0.01 millimeters um, because I want that's what I want to do for the depth of the engraving. So it's on 0 0.1 millimeters, but overall I want to do 0 0.3, but I don't want to take it all in one hit because you end up with a big burr. So I do 0.1 and I'll run it three times. I've got smoothing turned on also at 0 0.01. And then the retraction and the feed rate and the safe distance is irrelevant on this one. So axial stock to leave 0.1. We come out of there and then what I'll do is I will duplicate that. And on the second one, I'll do that as minus 0.2. And then I'll duplicate it again. And this one will be minus 0.3. Because I don't think because this is just done in passes I can't do it because it's just a tracing I can't do it in steps in depth so it will have to be done this way as far as I know maybe there is a way to do this but I'm not aware of it also have to change that to one millimeter on the pass extension which I didn't do on the second one pass extension one millimeter now we can come back here, turn our model off. Let's turn the sketch off. And then we can run transparent tool, turn the stock on, turn the tool path off, and we can run it. I'm not sure how good this is going to be on your camera, so I do apologise. If this is five minutes of not being able to see anything. 
and there you go and then it's on its third pass and it's done so that is good so I'm going to post this out now and I already had this before it looks like it's done an update so let's just reselect my folder post that out click on the one we've already done overwrite it and there it is on G54 drop that onto my USB and just save that right we got that on a USB let's take it over and I'll show you it on the machine and I know this isn't mind-boggling stuff doing a bit of engraving so in here that's the piece of 1.5 mil thick stainless I've got another piece here because I'm going to do two of them so all we've got that is sat on some parallels and just nipped up there's going to be no real tall pressure on it so that's not an issue right that is done so current commands there's our current commands and the tool we are using if we look under here is that tool there which is just a 90 degree or 45 included angle chamfer tool um, nothing special just an old tool it's not brand new it's not super sharp but it does a nice job really dirty so let's run this going to see anything through there the way that is now there's only 200 millimeters a minute feed rates so it's going to be quite slow so we'll snap that when it's engraved after the three passes okay so this is engraving we're getting close to the end so about the reflection this is its third pass. It's new. Just airline that off quick. There we go. Looks good. Take that out of there. that off quickly again it's quite hard to see because of reflections but that's engraved and then what we're going to do is we're going to press that half round so it sits onto the side of the tube so yeah that's that okay so he's showing you parts we're going to use for the side exit um, I showed you earlier where it wants to come out on the car so we want it sitting here and we probably want it approximately 160 mil wide and then just for the letterbox section let's say maybe 200 250 millimeters in depth so we've got some stainless sheet here and then what I make them out of is I get the set size tube which we want to use in this case, this is one and a half inch OD tube, and then I'll cut it down the centre as straight as I can, only with an angle grinder, so it's not perfect. And then I'll cut it into two sections, clean the edges up, and they will be the two sides of the tailpipe. And then depending on the size and shape, I'll cut centre pieces, which will sit like so. And essentially what you'll end up with is a top and bottom piece. Try and hold this in one and hold it up to the camera. Oh, fiddly. But basically like that. So you have a letterbox style 
opening one and a half inches high and then however wide we want and then however far back. And then the difficult part being is we then need to angle the back section to match up with a flared pipe which transitions from the one and a half inch tool and however wide we decide to go at the back up to the three inch round again. So that's the difficult part which we'll use a press tool for or we'll make a press tool to suit and I'll show you. So that's just cut out of 1.5 mil sheet and then whatever diameter round tube you want to use, cut it down the middle as best you can, uh, mark it with a bit of angle, give yourself a nice straight line, measure half the tube, mark the other side, angle grind it, be careful when you clamp it because it's going to want to spring open when you get to your final cut so the grinder can grab, so just be careful with that. And then once them bits are cut, that's what we end up with and then we'll get them tacked together and get a rough idea of the shape we want. I may even angle the back of this down because I need to get to the flared size at the back which transitions to the three inch tube so I can't leave it that wide at the rear of the tailpipe because I'll never be able to stretch a bit of three inch to that width. So I may well do the press tool bit next and then I'll know how wide I need to go. So let's go look at the press tool. Okay, so these are our plates that we're going to make the side exit from. And as said before, these are the side pieces. Now it's not going to be a straight section as such. It's going to be at an angle, like that. And then what we need to do at this width, on this end, is transition from that width to the three inch pipe. Now, I've already pressed one of these out, and this is the piece. So you can see it there. Not quite perfectly parallel, still got a bit of an arc either side, but it's pressed out on there and it nicely matches that there, if you can see. Nice fit, and then we'll just tweak this as we go. Same on the other end, real nice fit there. Now, all I do to press these out, this is to suit different sizes of tube. So, this is a one and a half inch diameter bit of tubing, and this was done with a tool to suit that one and a half inch and that's all it is it's just a grotty mig together section of tube and this is slightly smaller than the id of that just because you're going to get a bit of spring and we like to push it so what we do is we get our straight section of three inch tube these are off cuts and to be fair they're a little bit too short for what we want but it'll give you the gist to show you so all I've done is welded that at an angle, doesn't really matter what the angle is, but the steeper you can get away with the start, the better, because it's got to be able to fit inside the top of the three inch section of pipe, or whatever size you're doing. And then with this bar welded across the top, we'll push on that to flare this out. So this is the piece I'm going to use, but I'll just show you. I'll show you here pressing that out so I'm going to use the ratchet arbor press just to make it simple and I'll give you a rough gist of what we'll do like I say these are a little bit short but I put that on a block put that in there line it up just so this isn't tilted forwards or back and then use the press and just push it down. Now this will probably bottom out on the block before I get to where I want to be. Yeah, that's on the block there. But that's enough to just show you, so you can see. Take that out. And then that's the shape you're left with. But as you can see, this is now all over the show with shape. So this just gets put on the belt sander and flattened off. And then you end up with a decent flat shape there in comparison to that. And then the same with the other end, we flatten it over just to neaten and tidy it up a little bit. But them edges will be there or thereabouts 
the same size as that. And then you've just got to make up this middle section. And once that's been put on the linisher, it'll be nice and flat. So that's where we're currently at. That shows you. Cheap tool, you can make that out of anything you've got laying around. Solid bar, this is a section of tubing. Um, three bits of tube, done. And I've got them in different sizes. So that one is to go from three inch pipe and to suit the diameter of a one and three quarter inch. So you can see there, that's a bit too big for this one. So it wouldn't have matched the outside diameter, the outside radius, sorry. And then I've got larger ones where I've done them for four inch pipes and so on. So you can make any of them, quick and simple, nice and easy to do. And they do a nice job and it presses out easily. And obviously you'll get a nicer transition the longer this tube is because the shorter it is, the more flaring that end out is gonna affect the roundness of this end. So if you've got a tube about six inches long, it's almost still perfect one end. And what you can do is you can put a cap in one end to keep that round while you press the other end. And then when you take that little bung out, it's kept it shape. So there's the one I've done. That's been on the belt sander. That's been on the belt sander. This is a section of three inch. And as you can see there, that's not a bad fit. Slightly out but that'll weld up quite nice. So what I'm gonna do now, let's bring you back in here again, is I've got our top and bottom sheets, and now I just wanna do that sort of shape. So if I bring it around there, to show a little bit better, the tailpipe's gonna come in at an angle. So I just needed to work out how wide these sheets need to be so I've measured across there, from one side to the other. It's 101 millimeters across. The half of this tube, from the table to that top edge, measures 18 millimeters. So take that away and we've left with a 65 millimeter wide section in the middle. So I've drawn the 65 mil, marked it across at an angle, and I'll go cut these two pieces on the guillotine. Okay, so we cut our two pieces at the angle we want. Now I'm just gonna tack these along there and then do the same on the other side. That one I'll tack slightly further back so that I can match the angle on that after. So let's do that now. Just a small fusion tack at each end will do. But we just want to make sure that this top protrudes a little bit so we know we've got the right angle. Once we flatten it off. So as you see, we're a little bit short on this end, but that doesn't matter because we'll cut across here and tidy the end up once we're done.
as you can see. That's going to be the shape of our side exit. See your tacks in there. Don't worry about too mad that we're not in line here because like I say we'll cut across there so it's nice and neat after. And what we want to do is get the other sheet and do the same thing so we can tack it in place. If you're doing more than one of these, I'd get a bit of aluminium block and space it up so that that sits at the right height so you've got something to support it. Because currently you're going to be, what you can do is just bend one side in slightly so it holds that side while you tack the other side. And then you can bend it that way afterwards. It just gives you that extra bit of support while you're trying to tack everything in place. Sometimes they tack nice, other times you'll quickly light up on it and it'll keyhole out on you. So you've got to be prepared to get off the pedal quick if it starts to do that. Because when you come over and weld it fully, if you've got an area that's keyholed, you're going to notice it. Get a good few tacks across there because if not when you will it will move up and down and it will pull itself out of alignment which is what you definitely don't want just going to put a few more tacks on the other side here As with a lot of welding, doing these on such a straight edge, fit up is key. So if along here you've got gaps and this isn't nice and straight to this guillotine cut edge, it's going to open up and it's going to weld badly. Spend the time to put that on a belt linisher if you've got one and get it nice and flat or sit there and file it or use a grinder as best you can to keep that as a straight edge because it saves so much time in the long run. Now on this last piece, we'll just bend this back out. Easier said than done, but it will open up. And then we can squeeze down on that. See, that's not 
as nice and tight as I actually like it to be, so I must have guillotine cut that at a slightly different angle from the other side. But I should still be able to close that up okay. Might need to touch it with a bit further. We'll see how we get on. The tacks will pull it together slightly. What I'll try and do. I don't want it to be as out of alignment that way because you'll see that easier when it's done. Pulled that in quite nicely. And then each little fusion tap helps close it together as well. Okay, so that's the general shape the tailpipe's going to be. Let's bring that camera there, so you can see it there. Already looks quite good. We just need to trim that end, and obviously you can see that angle there. So I'll take that over to the belt sander, and I'll just plonk it straight down there until we've got a nice flat edge. And then when we come back, that should fit nicely onto there and I'll show you how it all lines up, if we've done it right. See, just give us a nice flat edge there. Don't take off more than you need to because the more you grind back, the wider this section is going to get and then it won't match the other part of the tube. Right, so just go around, deburred that. Just use the air file on there. Nice edge, nice and flat. Everything's true. Then obviously, here's our pressed piece for our transition. And if we line that up there, width-wise, that's pretty perfect. But you can see that we're out by about three mil on each side. So what we do is we'll tack around the edges on both sides and then we'll just tap that in, tap it down a little bit more to shape and get it tacked on there as well so it all matches up a little bit nicer although that step isn't crucial just for looks we want it as neat as we can so let's get that tacked in place doorbell right back from the doorbell 
and now we can tack this as said. Again, these will just be fusion tacks. It's at 50 amps. And once again, fit up is key because if you've got gaps and you try and fusion tack it, it will probably just keyhole out of there. Keep them nice and tight and you shouldn't have that issue. Just two on each side, and then there you can see the misalignment for this centerpiece. So, what I'm going to do is just try and tweak that in bit by bit and then get tapped. Sometimes I'll get in there and manage to clamp it. Uh, I'll try that. Let's go get the clamps. stop is as I clamp the jaws they're wanting to slip down on that angle put something between here just like that will do meaning that the actual jaws can't go forward anymore So our tacks are still holding up. And now you can see I've brought that in line a lot, lot closer. It's still out slightly, but it's a lot closer. And I may tweak it afterwards. We'll see. I'll use a bit of filler rod for this. I don't want this to open up. And now you can see in there that we're almost perfect. There's our transition. We kept it nice and short so we're not gaining too much length there so we haven't got the room. We need to go trim this straight across there to get rid of this overshoot and this overshoot. We'll see how close that is to a section of round pipe. Or tube should I say. So here's a section that was just cut and we've created a little bit of an arc again 
but we're not far off. So what I'd do is I'd get this fully welded. I'll get this trimmed up, get this fully welded because I'm going to purge it as well. Get it fully welded, get this back on the linisher, nose down, clean it up, give ourselves a nice, nice flat edge and then we can start working where we are on the car to how we're going to come off here because it's only a very short section from sort of that sort of distance that we've got to do to join up and make our mounting bracket. But it's coming together, looks nice. The Group A, Group A style side exit exhausts like this that were on a lot of the rally cars had supports, uprights in them. Probably only two uprights. If they were bigger, they might have had more. But that was because of the gravel, the stones, all the debris, everything they run over on the courses would potentially flatten and smash up the pipes. So they had supports in them to keep them, keep them intact and keep them in shape. So we're going to add them in. I've tried many different ways of putting them in, but the best way is to get your part exactly how you want it and then actually use a one mil slitting disc and just open up where you want it, how far you want it, and then cut two pieces to the exact height you need, slide them in and then weld all the way down. I've tried them with angles bent on them and trying to get in there and weld them and spot them from the top and it just doesn't work. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'll tidy this end up. Um, I may actually do that first, flatten that side off and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so we've cleaned up this end there, put it on the linisher, give ourselves a nice flat end. And then what I want to do is I want to put the supports in here now and I'm going to mark up and use a slitting disc and just slip down in two places so it's nice and spaced evenly across that distance. Now from outside edge to outside edge is 40 millimetres and I'll probably go back I'm going to go back 130 millimetres. So I'll cut two pieces, 130 by 40, and then we'll mark out our lines ready to slip through with a disc. Off cut 1.5 stainless again. Got our backstop set. Do a test nut on this first just to see how close we are. Because I want to be quite accurate with this. We'll measure off of here. So that was accurate actually. The bent end of that tape measure that's out a little bit. Forty. 
Right, so we got 40 mil there. And we're at 130. That's them cut. So they're gonna sit inside when you look at it like so and support that. So I'll measure across here now, work that out, break it up between three, and then we'll mark our lines. Not very good at maths in my head, so I'll get a pen and paper. Fifty-four on each one. So mark that out. Yeah. Yep, that looks good. Now I'll transfer them across because we want to make sure they're straight. Do with a fine sharpie, but I don't have one at the moment. going to be long enough they're going to be fine So that's very faint, but if you can see there, we've got our lines coming up with a little mark at each end. And I know it doesn't look very even when you're looking from the top, but once they're in there, it will look good from the end. So I'll go slit them 
up to the marks. And all I'm gonna use is a one mil slitting disc on a grinder. So I'll carefully run that up there and do the same on the other sides. And then I'll just jiggle it out a bit so that we can fit these in there nicely and then tack them in place and weld all the way along. But I'll go do that in the other room because I don't do it where the cars are kept. And I'll be back in a minute. Right, so there's one slit cutting that side. You can see there, we've got the other one to do, but I only do one at a time because it'll all move around a bit too much. There's our upright. And then what we'll do, we slide that in there. And we'll tweak that about. Okay, so that one's lined up in there. See, that's relatively straight. We just, when we tack it in place, we need to make sure these ends aren't pushed in or out, make sure they line up nice. So we'll tack that in place now. when you have to be careful so you see that side has stepped out of line so when we tack it we need to make sure we push that back down There we go, there's one upright in there. Now that sort of gives us a bit of strength back in it, a bit of rigidity. We'll go cut the second line up to the mark on both sides. We'll put the second piece in. Okay, so we're back, we've done the other slot. 
in both sides and then there's the second one in so that's going to be the finished item with the supports we do a few more tacks again a few more tacks there all looks nice and straight then we're a little bit uneven on the end but again we can whop that face down on the belt sander or the linisher whatever you want to call it to get that nice and true and then we'll weld the tailpipe section up fully after tacking it sorry i'll just brush it on the linisher give it a nice finish before we do the welding that way we haven't got to touch it afterwards but let's tack that in place go all tacked in place and then when we weld it fully we've tried them before with just a few tacks on the inside but they resonate and tend to vibrate so when we weld it all the way down that stops that and it stayed 95% straight on that angle you're gonna get a little bit of warping but you can't really avoid that it is just a sheet metal piece after all so yeah, looking good so far. Let's show you whereabouts on the car the customer actually wants this without burning my hands. So obviously that being the rear court panel of the car and he already has carbon spats just before the arch and it will sit that way and it's probably going to sit around there just in front of that back wheel and I reckon that's going to look pretty sweet right so let's go ahead clean up this edge get it sealed off and start welding it all up and then we'll have a right good look at it. Now when I'm going to weld these up, I've just gone over that with the linisher just to tidy it up a bit. I'll use foil tape on this end. The problem with this end is because you're going to weld right up to it, you do end up burning it away, making a little bit of a mess on the end, which is when I'll go back and put it on the belt sander, linisher, and then just clean up that edge so you've got a real nice finish on everything. If not, the ends will look a bit grotty. So all I'll do for the flat end, a bit of this silver foil tape it's not the best stuff 
but it does work. The problem is it does leave a fair bit of residue. So what you're better off doing is putting it on and then if you can cut round it with a blade. Put it on a couple of layers so it's not too thin that it's going to tear. Keep it nice on one edge and then we'll go around it with a blade because I don't want it to fold around and stick to all the sides there. So let's cut around that now. I have this little scalpel. hasn't got to be perfect you just don't want the excess as said that's gonna fold up and stick to the top of the tailpipe because it will leave residue and in an ideal world you don't want to linish this off I don't want to linish this one off after it's been welded I want to leave the finish as is and we'll put a couple of tiny holes in here just to let the argon out when we're purging it. So there we're nice and sealed on the end. And then for this end, you can buy all sorts of bungs that clamp onto various size um, bits of pipe. Um, prices can range, but I'll use Scotch-Brite. I normally have, I'll buy this in 20, 30 meter lengths to suit whatever pipe I've got my purge tube in there and then I'll just roll this up to size and roll it up just so it's a nice snug fit like that and there you go job done whatever you're doing just make sure you don't get it so close that when you're welding it's behind it because it will burn and then it's gonna make a bit of a mess on everything Turn our purge gas on. And then we'll feel the positive pressure come out of there. And then I'll use a bit of filler rod around this part because you've still got some gaps from that transition from the shape of the tailpipe to the shape of the free ground. But down here, I'll probably just pulse and won't use filler rod. Get that welded. I just turned the camera off there, just went and gave that one final clean and a little rub with a bit more Scotch Bright. And now I'll go ahead and weld it.
up through the opposite side. couple of blocks just to keep it the angle we want it as I go over and around these corners That's the top section welded. Not the greatest. By any means, there's plenty of better welders out there than me. But I do okay with the stainless. Bit of a jack of all trades. Do a bit of alley, do a bit of stainless, do a bit of machining, do a bit of turning. But um, I don't profess to be the best at any of them. I just had a go at all of them. Now what I'm do is I'm just gonna pulse down here with no filler rod. That's how I've always done them. Works okay for me. I'm not going to get into the debate of whether you should or shouldn't do it this way. Personal preference, each to their own. But this is how I've always done it. What I'll do is I'll put that there so you might get a bit of
and I'll just run from where my taps are and then this one and do it that way all the way along gives me a nice even finish and then I'll do that on the whole thing and then I'll bring you back because you don't want to watch all of that right so you've welded this all up now you can see it's all done in short sections make sure we didn't overheat it so we've got the two reinforcing slats in the centre welded on both sides nice pretty colours people seem to like that you can see there that when you've welded the centres it has pulled in a bit can't really avoid that the only thing I could think of doing in future is if machined up some 40 mil blocks and put them in between each stage to uh, stop it pulling in because it wouldn't be able to and then you could potentially go in there and just knock them out afterwards but that's trial and error sometimes it pulls in worse than others and then we've got the end of the plates so are just sticking out overshooting that's not level yet so we'll go put that on the belt sander we'll linish that off get that nice and flat and then I'll uh, I'll show you the end we've still got some sticky residue on there on the tape as well from when we purged it so yeah that's pretty much done by the end so let's do the end and then see if we're happy with that let's get a pair of gloves and we'll get our mask do we've got a nice even surface all the way across the bottom there and now we're just going to deburr it another project on the go for a manifold maybe I'll do a bit on that so we'll just take the air file So as this is now done, one thing I didn't show on the video is that I've welded the name tag on there. I'll just come behind the camera so you can maybe see a bit better. And then you can see about the press tool that we just pressed it onto a die with a bit of round bar just to match the shape, the outside diameter of that pipe as well as we could. So yeah, there it is. And then that's going to sit if I angle you up a little bit. So the name tag, you're not really going to see it, so it's not sticking right out for the customer, but it is there. And that's how the pipe is going to sit. Somewhere around there. And I'll connect it up to the rest of the system. I'll show you some pictures once it's all done and I'll add them to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Not too much, nothing too exciting, but with a lot of people stuck indoors at the moment, 
I'm still working just on my own. Um, I can walk to work just around the corner from my house and everyone's stuck in with this COVID-19 situation. Might give a few of you something to watch, a few subscribers. If any of you are new and you like the video, then subscribe to the channel and I'll try and get back into doing a few more videos as and when I can. And if it's just me and the dog working for a while, then uh, I'll have a little bit more time on the answer to do some videos. Cheers for watching.